Hello, my name is Dave Aarons and welcome to my YouTube channel. So what I thought I'd talk to you about in this video is setting up a small workshop. So with uh, what's going on in the country right now, we're in the middle of the pandemic and um, a lot of kids are at home. So it'd be a perfect time to teach them woodworking. So what do we need to start up a small woodworking shop. Well, first of all, it's going to start with the bench. And the bench is really a tool into itself. But this is where all your work holding is going to happen. This is where the platform where you actually can build your projects. This particular bench is based on a Charles Hayward design. Often it's called the Hayward bench. But it's uh, pretty simple. This one is five feet long and just under two feet deep. Okay. With me, I like to have my bench out in the middle of the floor, or away from the wall at least, okay? And uh, by away from the wall, I usually like two and a half to three feet all the way around the bench to um, facilitate work. So here I got my yard stick going around. You can see that if it wasn't for that lumber stack, I'd have it. So I gotta do a little work on my workshop as well. But what having to clear around, all the way around your bench does for you is that later on, if this wood stack, and I gotta figure this out. If it wasn't here, I'd be able to come over here, hold a board on my bench and be able to plane it, okay? On a hand plane, um, be able to saw at my vise. A good workbench would also have a vise. I'll get into uh, how to actually hold things to your workbench in another video to include holes, hold fast, vices, dogs, and other appliances. Okay? So you want to be able to get to that end. Be able to, get, of course, get to the front. A lot of times we're going to be sawing at the vise or chopping or chiseling or whatever. So I want to be able to step back and be able to run a saw unencumbered. Okay? Sometimes I might want to come over here and run a saw this way, okay? So I want to be able to step back over here as well. I like having the bench out in the middle, as I said before, because sometimes I find it necessary to come to this side of the bench to do things, okay? A bench can certainly go against the wall if you, if you don't have space to do this. It just seems, to, it just, uh, over, the, over the years I've been doing this, I find that the bench in the middle, it just it's just easier to work. Okay, but some people just can't don't have the space to do that. So you're looking at five feet, a minimum of two and a half feet, a minimum two and a half feet here, a minimum two and a half feet here. So ten feet. Okay, you would need ten feet of uh, wall space to be able to do that. Okay, so back on the wall. What I like to do is when I'm working on my bench is I like to be able to come right back here and grab a tool, okay? And so for storage for tools right now, well, first of all, what we're going to use is the tool tray and the workbench. Some people don't like tool trays because they do tend to collect shavings. They do collect shavings rather quickly. However, I find that when working with kids that having a landing spot where the tools can't fall out is just beneficial, prevents damaged tools. In addition to the tool tray, we can use shelves and cabinets on a wall to be able to, to store the tools and supplies that we're gonna to need to do our projects. This is just a, a shelf, okay? This is where I'm gonna put the majority of my tools, all right? So the, all the tools are gonna to pretty much be on here. And the tools that we're gonna to use to start out in, on my channel, this is about as big as you're going to need for right now. And that, it's going to take you a long way to build things. This cabinet right here is just where I keep my hardware. Whatever you have to store, the screws, nails, hinges, all that stuff that we're going to use can go in a storage container like this. I just happen to have this one with the chalkboard in front of it. And uh, that's where I'm going to store those kind of things. I have a, a peg rack down here, this little coat rack, and uh, this store aprons, my jacket, things like that, okay? We already talked about the tool shelf. 
Up here I have a little cabinet. This cabinet I'm going to use to keep my finishing supplies and other things to maintain my tools. Okay, but right now I have a few finishes that I've made and I like to use finishes that are child safe. Okay. Most of the finishes I use I tend to, I've started to kind of mix myself or make myself. Under my little cabinet I have this book rack. And the books I enjoy the most for woodworking are books that were good geared towards boys that came out right around the Depression era, okay? So the late 1920s, early 1930s. This one right here was uh, 50 Poplar Woodworking Projects. This is a reprint. And uh, this one originally came out in 1938. This one is called Boycraft. It's also a reprint. This is plans in Working Drawings with Clear and Concise Description of Useful Articles, Toys, and Games, originally published in 1928. The main book I'll be using in my videos is The Teacher's Handbook of Sloyd. This was written by Otto Salomon in 1891, and it was written to teach teachers how to instruct children in uh, the manual arts. In regards to woodworking, the Teacher's Handbook of Sloyd covers how to do exercises. The first four videos I did were all on how to use a knife, and that was a long cut, a cross cut, a bleak cut, and a bevel cut. And those are actually the first four exercises out of like just over 80 exercises that this book covers. Everything from how to use a spoke shave to how to cooper a bucket you know, how to, how, basically how a barrel was made. So uh, we'll be covering quite a bit if we go through the exercises in this book. And then they had what's called models to go along with it, which was the actual objects that the children got to make. And very basic, they use a very basic set of tools. So in my next video, what I'd like to do is cover the basic toolkit of the per for the models that are made in this book, okay? So thanks again. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for all the support, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this.